Ten. Stand by the tech studio. Seven. Six. Stand by camera one, mice one and two. Three. Two, one. Take studio. Good afternoon, MCHS, and welcome to yet another packed episode of MCTV. I'm Tim Evans. And I'm Bo Weatherby. Today we'll be, uh, on today's show, we'll be looking at a bunch of uh, different um, stories. Uh, this recent Spring Fling Danks, we'll be look, we'll be, and we'll be going on the road trip to BC and a look at the Grade 9 boys basketball. But our first, our lead story. All right, our lead story is Grade 9 Boys Badminton. This is a new startup team that has lots of promise. Uh, the practices so far are going good. We have yet to prove ourselves on the field. But as Coach Gavin Denham says, there is a lot to be achieved with this team. It's that time of year again at MCHS where Grade 9s come and try out for some of the many sports our school has to offer, badminton being one of them. This gives students an opportunity to practice and excel in their favorite sports. I interviewed a few boys from the Grade 9 Badminton team and asked them what their favorite and least favorite parts of Badminton are. I'm really competitive and I hate losing. Hitting the bird because it feels really cool when you get a good smash. Though the team is new to the season, they still show dedication and love for the sport. At the end of the day, they all gather in the gym where they roughly spend an hour or so practicing their skills and footwork, striving for success and preparing themselves for upcoming games. It was my fantasy from when I was uh, a little kid. Just wanted to uh, try it out, going for gold. This year's team is full of enthusiasm and they have a unique drive to win. They all feel very optimistic for the future and are determined to conquer all their games. For MCTV, this is Amanda Andrick. Jeech Pre Junior High has a history for fine arts excellence and annually puts on a show for the town. This year, the school's actors and actresses bring the Beauty and the Beast to life on stage at the Community Cultural Center, which concludes tonight. Joining me now is a three-year veteran actress at Primo, Megan Pleasance. Megan, thanks for joining me on the show today. Thanks. All right, so <laughs> how did last night go? Uh, did it live up to your expectations? Yeah, it was pretty good. There's a couple slips here and there, but all in all, it went pretty good. All right, so performing in a facility like the Cultural Center, um, I know it must be a real thrill, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so in the past years, I know the play was performed in the gym at Primo. Yeah. Why the change of venue? Well, when the community cultural was, center was built, we, it's better than GH Primo, we performed on a smaller stage and mm -hmm. we had to build all the stage together. And the community cultural center has like a larger auditorium and stuff and it was just worked out better. Okay. So um, obviously with the production of this scope and scale, uh, a lot of preparation goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, could you describe some of these preparations for me? Well, we do practice around three times a week for a couple hours and it goes pretty smooth. Yeah. And there's a lot of preparations for costumes and sets and stuff that we all have to do. And yeah, Miss Reva actually changed most of the script. <laughs> so she like rewrote it and added lots of characters in, so. Nice. Yeah. So I know this is, your, this is your third and final production here at Primo. Um, so what keeps you coming back to work on these drama productions year after year? Well, it is really fun. And I meet lots of people who like to do the same thing as me. And it's nice. fun. All right, yeah. so I hear you're a wolf in this year's production. Um, so have there been any challenges for you to get into this role? Well, in the past years, I've always kind of played this goody two-shoes type character <laughs> yeah. and not as much of this sort of rebel type character and so it was a little harder. Nice. All right, so I know you can't provide us with any of the details for tonight's show because obviously you want people to go watch it, yeah. but um, are there any cool things in store for audiences tonight? Well, there's a lot of dances and singing and the costumes are pretty cool too. Yes. Yeah. All right, so yeah. are you planning on coming to MCHS and acting in our shows as well? I will definitely be auditioning. <laughs> Excellent. So I hear there's a lot of good talent coming to MCHS. Yeah, there is. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks for joining me, Megan. Thank you. And good luck with tonight's show. Thanks. All right. So if you still want to check it out, tonight is the final night of Primo's The Beauty and the Beast. Tickets are being snapped up quick, but you can try and get your paws on them at Sobeys or Primo School. Seven bucks for adults, four for students. 
Doors are at 6.30, and the show starts at 7. Now, from the extravagant to the excruciating, the April 4th Spring Fling dance was less than peachy, according to attendees. The low attendance numbers were dismal, although the beverages were above par. Students were less than impressed with the DJ the ch grad charity committee hired that played music was less than ear-pleasing, as reporter Genevieve branson Ratouche found out. Today, just the spring fling dance held by a former grads turned out to be a great hit. People danced their hearts away from the challenges of high school. But therefore, I asked why these dances are a great escape from reality. Guys, this is uh, my fourth or fifth time back here, and uh, so apparently you guys like having fun with the music I play for you. It would be a good way to uh, raise money for our grad charity because a lot of kids like to go to school dances. Um, I don't find challenges. Uh, I, Morinville has a great group of kids. I've had a lot of fun here. Uh, they're very interactive and um, I, what I found is when you play 100% requests, which is all I'm doing, I'm playing the requests of all you guys here tonight, you guys dance. It's a fun group. I don't have any challenges here. A lot of people dress up for the themes that we choose for the grad dances, yeah. Here for all the dances. The best thing would have to be just when the grads wear the grad shirts and we're all just kind of like one group. I think that's really cool. There come certain challenges in life when you just have to keep pushing and pushing yourself. But these angry students complain furthermore what could overall change about our dances. Sometimes it's the themes of the, like, the dances and other times I don't know, it's just even the times, like I heard that a lot of people couldn't come just because it's after spring break and a lot of people just, they're tired, they just had fun, some of them are grounded, so it's just kind of a bad time. Regular theme or if uh, there's no school the next day. You know what I've noticed, the trend where you get the best participation is when you theme up your dances. If you did a crazy 80s night, if you did a 60s night or a sock hop, a 1950s and we're going back even with the music. Those are the ones, or even a beach party thing, we find those ones tend to draw the biggest numbers overall. That's the only downside is when nobody comes and then you have nobody to dance with. And it's all, it's, it gets really fun when everyone dances because you know you have those like people that are too cool to dance and they kind of just stand yeah. there while you dance and then you ask them to dance. Look at you. Do you, do you think? Maybe they can't, maybe they don't have $8 to afford the ticket. Uh, why else wouldn't a kid come? They probably think they're too cool to go to a dance. <laughs> MCHS's themes live up to the name, but do they still satisfy our formal students? The grad charity committee organized this dance, but I ask a final time what these students think is important about drawing more attention to these dances. I think they live up to the name. Um, Honestly, we just need more people to come. We need we need to actually put more money towards making our dances better rather than just throwing a music system in the middle of the gymnasium and telling people to dance. Okay, like we gotta have props, we gotta decorate, we gotta we gotta really get into it. Do you think the grad committee kinda organized this dance, like called the DJ and made the drinks and uh, that's about it. Got the chaperones in. I'm gonna tell you right now. In middle school, we had MTV, much like a much dance, with like big screens and like fans and like DJs, and that's what you gotta do to get people to come. Okay, that makes it way more fun. This is Jean Viev, Ranson Retouche, reporting for MCTV News. The weather recently has been all right, considering the less than favorable spring weather we've been having. Yeah, well, the snow is melting at least. Uh, I still feel like groundhogs too. Me too, but our reward will soon be this summer for sure. For now though, we'll have to keep the optimistic mind about this weather. So it looks like um, the weather is going to start turning out to be a little bit warm and nice during some parts of the country. Um, it looks like that yellow knife uh, is going to be minus two. Uh, uh, two in Whitehorse, uh, 12 in, Van in Vancouver, uh, minus one in Regina, uh, two in Winnipeg, and 11 in Toronto, 12 in Montreal, and uh, some other parts in the country, it's supposed to be uh, giving up some nice weather as well. And um, so if we look at the weather in Alberta, we got uh, seven uh, Fort, Mc, uh, Fort McMurray, uh, high level six in, uh, in the higher part of the, of the province, and um, seven Grand Prairie, 
uh, three in Calgary, um, and six in Madison Hat, four in Banff, and looks like six in Jasper. I'm looking at our current conditions. Uh, it looks like it's uh, around two, and uh, it looks like it, the weather's supposed to be really nice during this entire era in the, in the weather. But um, it looks like it's going to be really nice, actually. I'm very excited. And um, now we're looking at the, at the weekend weather. And so the Wednesday is about 4, and Thursday it's around 7, and Saturday is around 2. Sunday is minus 1. It's Monday is 6, Tuesday is 5, and I'm actually very excited because the weather looks like it's going to be really nice. I'm excited for the weekend. It seems like it's going to be great weather. Um, not that bad, actually. Um, so, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a great time. Hopefully, we'll all have a great time with the weather. Back to you. Thanks, Bo. Late spring, but I guess those are the cars we're dealt with. While one of the biggest blizzards of the winter hit home, reporter Tony Nault was out enjoying the warm weather, grass, and mountain views of British Columbia. A trip that took him from Mournville through Kamloops to Mission BC, located less than an hour away from the host city of the 2010 Winter Olympics, Vancouver. Tony recorded the scenery of his trip to give us a taste of the spring and on the west coast of Canada. Most people spent their spring break in the cold weather of Alberta. I traveled to the warm weather of British Columbia. The province lives up to its name, beautiful. Large Rocky Mountain passes. Beautiful streams and lakes. High hills. And open fields and vineyards. The weather on the drive up was worse than hoped for, but was well worth it once we made it into the province. Sunshine and no snow. We spent most of the trip hitting up the golf courses, all with beautiful mountain views. Not to mention the amount of Tim Hortons we stopped at in Curvy Rose it took us to get there. If you ever need a weekend of break and relaxation, head west into our beautiful sister province. Ooh. Now let's look at a look at upcoming events here at MCHS JHP Mall. The Beauty and the Beast wraps up tonight at the Cultural Center. Tickets are still available at Sobeys. Primo, $7 for adults, $4 for students. Doors open at 6.30. Now let's start at 7. Roger Ch uh, Champion. Champagne Memorial Bike Trip training rides continue this Sunday. Meet at 10 a.m. sharp in front of the school. Please bring a CSA approved helmet and bike, kind of necessary. See Mr. Baudesign for more info. The dreaded night for the student is coming. Parent teacher interview interviews are on Wednesday, April 24th from 5.30 to 8.30 in the gym. It's your parents' opportunity to find out what kind of shenanigans happens in the class. Democracy is coming to student council. If you're interested in joining the student council, you must be elected by your peers, Go, got the winning platform, pick up the candidate application form from the office and have it returned, filled out to the elections MCHS head Madame Boucher by April 19th. Voting takes place May 16th. Be sure to exercise your freedom as a student and get out to vote. Your school, your vote, make it, make it hurt. There's a PD day coming, which of course means a long weekend. Start planning your, week, your weekend warrior road trips for Friday the 26th. A night of the One Axe is making its return to MCHS on Tuesday, April the 30th at the Morville Community Cultural Center. Tickets are $6 here at the school or at Sobeys. See Mrs. Niamchak for more info. For these and all the other school events, keep connected by watching the daily announcements, log logging on to the school's website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca or visit us on Twitter at MCHS underscore wolves. Alrighty, the grade 9 boys basketball team tried hard to make the February 7th Red Deer Tournament, but ultimately fell 47-49 to R.S. Fowler. The boys played hard in the qualifying game, but learned valuable lessons from their loss. The boys were impressed about the loss, but as Coach Gavin Denham told MC reporter Genevieve Vance on Retouche, 
The team is motivated and pumped to take down Fowler next time. Offer an intuitive basketball program that helps so... players better develop their skills and progressively become the best they can be. The junior boys game against Fowler proved very tight, but these players tell me how much fun it is to be part on the team. Basketball is a fun sport and well, uh, it's always fun to be a part of a team. Just not on this team because we're full. But you know, it's a pretty fun sport, so we'll join out some other team. Together a lot, we uh, play well as a team, and uh, uh, we try to help each other out as we can. Fun. We uh, get to make up lots of plays, you know, score lots of baskets, pretty fun, you know. And uh, exciting. Helps us learn uh, our skills. In the school, I hope. We represent um, Howells, everything that MCHS stands for. Um, it helps in, uh, install good uh, characteristics in everyone. I hope that they enjoy their time playing. I just want them to enjoy it so to make sure that they or hope that they uh, keep playing when they're older. Fortunately, the junior boys' loss did not qualify them for the next tournament, but the rage can be felt by everyone, and this loss won't slow these boys down. It's a game we probably could have or should have won. We missed some easy shots um, and we let them have a couple easy baskets. But the boys play hard every game and they try their best all the time. Uh, it kept us down when we uh, tried to score a couple more baskets. Uh, all of the Tullix, you know, yeah. championship, you know. We just try and take one home next time, you know. Just try and win a couple games, you know, next time. How to shoot better so far. Uh, also, uh, getting progressively better at dribbling. Well, it kind of sucks, so it's, you know, it's a bad loss. So, yeah. Yes, I think we'll win every game. Um, we play cuts next, and they're uh, they're a good team, but we should be we should be close. It should be a good one. You know, we can handle them next time as long as we just keep our minds set on the game plan. You know. <laughs> Then to see just TV tonight, we have seen the junior boys play against Fowler. It was a very pain and painful and excruciating game, as this is not their only loss in the season. They have lost many other games, and they have lost another one to Fowler as well earlier in the season. The Red Deer tournament does not go as well as they planned, but they are hoping to bring it back by the end of the season. This is jean Yav Ranson Retouche reporting for MCTV News. Coming up on the April 24th episode of Warrenville's number one news source, We'll have an inside look at the St. Albert Junior Youth Group, a behind-the-scenes look at the chaotic order here in the studio, and a promotional video for Haas Automotion. All that and your weather team forecast on our April 24th program. Well, that's our show for today. How's the weather shaping up, Bo? Well, it looks like it's going to get a little uh, nicer during some part of the time. Well, that sounds all right. But before we go, folks, on a more somber note, we'd like to send out our thoughts and prayers to the spectators and athletes who were all victims of a horrendous terrorist attack on Monday at the Boston Marathon. And especially our condolences to the family and friends of three innocent people, among them a young eight-year-old boy who lost their lives in the attack. It truly makes us appreciate how fragile life is and how lucky we are every time we wake up in the morning. Stay strong, Boston. For all of us here at MCTV, I'm Bo Weatherby. And I'm Tim Evans. Have a good afternoon, MCHS.